Looks like apple cider vinegar doesn't just help us after eating carbs, but it can actually help blunt our appetite, which is why I'm such a big fan of having it in the morning. I feel like, sure, it wakes you up. Sure, it starts your day. Sure, it gives you that kick in the pants you need to like, whoa, okay, let's rock and roll. But it actually can make it so you eat less throughout the course of the day too. And it's working on a twofold effect. This is what's really, really interesting. So there was a study that was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition that I really want to do a dive into because it takes a look at the concentration of what's called acetic acid. That's the primary component of apple cider vinegar. And it does fine. Well, we'll get into that exactly, but it's very, very interesting. And it tells us a lot, specifically with how apple cider vinegar affects us, like if we were eating something high glycemic, like in this case, 50 grams of carbohydrates coming from white bread. So let's go ahead and jump in. Today's video video is brought to you by Seed. There's a 15% off discount link down below for Seed Daily Symbiotic. If you're looking at carbohydrates, you're looking at glucose metabolism, people really need to pay paying more attention to how a good probiotic may affect that. Okay, it's not so much about the probiotic, it's about the gut biome in the first place. The gut biome plays a role in how we metabolize carbohydrates. It has to do with what are called short chain fatty acids, which are the byproduct of all the collective bacteria breaking things down in our gut. So when we're in gut dysbiosis, there is some evidence that glucose tolerance can decrease, which is why I recommend people eat a diverse diet no matter what. Eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, eat a wide variety of foods, no matter what kind of dietary pattern you're doing. But if that's difficult for you or you're on the road a lot and you're really just trying to look after your gut, try Seed. Cool technology with a capsule inside of a capsule. So it's a probiotic that has a capsule, but inside that capsule is another capsule. So it has like a multi-stage delivery, which is something I've never seen before and really, really cutting edge technology. So that link is down below to save 15% off. Big thank you to Seed for sponsoring this content and making this possible. And they've got Thomas DeLauer's stamp of approval on them big time. Okay, so this European Journal of Clinical Nutrition study took a look at two different groups, a control group, okay, so a group that did not have apple cider vinegar, and then a group that had three different concentrations of apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar with either 18 millimoles of acetic acid, 23 millimoles of acetic acid, or 28 millimoles of acetic acid. So acetic acid, again, the primary acid that really is doing the trick. Okay, so they gave them these, and then what they had them do is they had them consume 50 grams of carbohydrates from a high glycemic white bread. Here's what is wild. Okay, 120 minutes later, so two hours later, they took a look at these individuals' glucose levels and insulin levels. And guess what? Glucose levels were significantly lower in the apple cider vinegar group, and insulin levels were significantly lower in the apple cider vinegar group. What in the world? This is super cool. But not only that, it was dose dependent. The higher the concentration of acetic acid, the lower the glucose and the lower the insulin. Okay, but not only this, when they gave them health questionnaires and they had them talk about their satiety, they found that not only was there less insulin and glucose, but there was also significantly less cravings and way more overall satiety. They felt more satiated overall, which is huge. So it could be the interplay between glucose levels being lower, so less cravings, insulin levels being lower and less cravings, but it looks like there might be two different mechanisms here. Now, what is potentially going on? Well, apple cider vinegar does a couple of things. For one, it actually decreases the amount of enzymes that are involved in carbohydrate breakdown. So that means that you have less ability, literal ability to break down the starches. And the actual, so you have to break down starches into individual smaller starches and smaller glucose molecules to be able to absorb. If we don't break down the starches, guess what? We don't ever break them down into glucose. So therefore our glucose doesn't go as high. So not only are we attenuating that glucose response, we are potentially lessening how much is actually absorbed. Okay. The other piece is apple cider vinegar literally delays gastric emptying. So not only are we slowing down the digestion, but we're slowing down the physical, like mechanical digestion. We're slowing down the enzyme digestion and the actual mechanical digestion. So just to paint a picture, when insulin levels are elevated, insulin stops lipolysis. Okay. It's just a natural response. When insulin levels spike, glucagon levels go down, lipolysis stops, hormone sensitive lipase stops or slows down and is no longer liberating fats from a triglyceride into the bloodstream, meaning fat loss slows down and stops. So not only are we controlling cravings with apple cider vinegar, but we are potentially making it so that we don't slow down fat loss as much. 
It's getting loud here because they're doing some construction. So I'm going to wrap up this video. But as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.